Hello and welcome back to my YouTube channel. I'm Alex and this is a place where I talk about what I've been making each month and I'm actually wearing a handmade top today so um, let me tell you all about this. It's the Hemlock Tea by Grainline Studios and I've made mine sleeveless or well it sort of has this, um, would you call that like a raglan? No. Oh, I can't remember what that, <laughs> drop shoulder I think, I think it's a drop shoulder. Um, the pattern does come with sleeves and I just left mine off for this kind of loose flowing look and I've actually made two, so you might be able to see this in the background. Got uh, another one in blue, which long time viewers will recognise this fabric, actually you probably recognise both of these because I've used them before and that's the brilliant thing about when you hand make your own wardrobe, as long as you buy enough fabric when something wears out you can make another one, so it didn't actually wear out but this is one of my favourites, it's such, I don't know how it pick up on camera because it's a very thin stripe, it might be going a bit crazy but in person it's a lovely bright blue and it looks really fresh in the summer and I love wearing it with I have a pair of um, I think they're called the bellbird shorts I'm gonna leave show notes below so I'll check that and find out who the designer was but yeah they're a white linen pair of shorts they're really nice um, kind of loose style with elasticated waist and little pockets and it looks really nice in the summer with this so um, yeah I've got this I'm wearing this today with my Arden pants I'm probably covered in fluff <laughs> these are a Helen's closet pattern and yeah I've been working today it's the end of the day so they're linen and they do get very rumpled and I get covered in fluff. If you're new here I actually dye my own fabrics and I turn them into project bags so I'm sewing all day every day and I get all the fluff and the little threads from the machine just cover all of my clothes <laughs> so um, yeah hopefully they looked presentable. I wasn't expecting to stand up and show you those but as it's a whole handmade outfit might as well share but um, yeah I like this that it has the black stripes it goes with my black linen trousers as well so yeah I'm always thinking about what things go together and I think I got a little bit off track but what I was trying to say was if you've seen these before I've used these fabrics before and the blue one is my favourite and I actually got ink from printing <laughs> on the corner and I just wear it around the house now so it still has it's not that it's fallen apart or anything and um, the jersey is really lovely and soft but I did have enough to make a new one so this summer I knew I needed a few more more t-shirts in my wardrobe so I hope you're happy to see some sewing bits on my channel I haven't shown any handmade wardrobe bits I don't think for a while not anything new anywhere I think I was wearing the my Zotis dress recently but yeah I have finally um sewn myself some bits for the summer so I put that back down there and what shall I show you first let's chat about socks so in this bag I've got in one of my summer berry bags and I've got a new pair of socks by This Handmade Life. I think when I spoke to you last time I said I was planning on doing the Cafe Olay socks but these are actually a different pair. I think these are called St Mary's Mead. They're part of the Agatha Christie collection that she's done and yeah I purchased this one. I've made them into shorties. I'm going to pop my hand in so I can try and show you the lace. I always think it's a bit easier to see it on the top of the foot. <laughs> but really lovely pattern, super simple. I think there's six rounds in the repeat and two of those you're doing um, increases or decreases in yarn overs, that kind of thing. So a very easy pattern to follow. I've made these into shorties. The pattern was for a longer... Um, a longer leg but if you want to do the same basically when I completed the heel I did another full round of the repeat so those six rows and then I did the two rows of the lace and immediately went into the ribbing and I think hopefully that show up on camera but you can see it's actually the ribbing goes really nicely into the lace pattern I think it looks quite sweet so yeah, that was what I did for those. Um, only got one so far. I've got the beginnings of it's in one of my little DPN cozies. I haven't got any of these left. This is in one of my spring bees. I do have some in this print, so if you're looking for those, they're in the shop. But I've got these in one of my spring DPN cozies. There we go. 
don't want to lose anything. And yeah, <laughs> probably not even me worth getting that out of the bag to show you, was it? But I've got the toe and I'm literally ready to start the lace. I did that last night. I finished the sock and I knew if I just if I don't start the toe immediately, it just doesn't happen. So it's one of those things you keep putting it off. So I like to while I'm in the knitting zone, as soon as I've cast off one sock, try and get the next one, at least get to the toe when you have to think a little bit more. I really like um Olivia's patterns. It's got a really nice way of doing the increases on the toe because these are the toe up and yeah I've said loads of times love this heel that she uses and I'm sure some of you told me it was the Flegel heel so yeah really pleased with how those are coming out that's the Cascade Heritage yarn in Cascade Heritage solids in the Chanterelle colorway there's a few different pinks I'm pretty sure that's the Chanterelle colorway so yeah a lovely halfway to having a new fresh pair of socks I'm really into knitting those shorties at the moment you've probably seen every pair I knit that length I don't know why I put off for so long thinking that they weren't going to be a good fit I thought they were going to be baggy at the ankle but they're not they're totally fine and I get why everyone likes knitting them I just think they look really yeah, they look really good at that length. I like that they kind of finish around the ankle. I like the look so. And of course they're quicker to knit and you don't use as much yarn. I've got enough to knit the second sock and I will have done two pairs of socks out of that one ball of yarn. So I've got size UK four feet. And yeah, I can happily get two pairs of socks, especially with that shorty length um, out of one ball of yarn. So let's see, next up I'm going to show you my cushion. So I've been working on the Kunis cushion by Anna Vetzel and it's finished. So last time I showed you this it was in progress, I think maybe I'd got about a third to go. But this is how the finished cushion looks and yeah I think it looks really great. I love the texture, it's 50 centimetres by 30 centimetres and it's a lovely plump pillow because it's actually knits and slips it has much more of a woven feel I love that it doesn't actually look knitted I think it looks um, more like a woven piece but it has the lovely texture of the wool the yarn that I used is the yarn that's called for in the pattern so it's Phil Kalana um, I don't remember what it's called I've got the rest of the yarn this is in one of my summerberry totes this is what I had to pop it in when it outgrew my other bag. So yeah, so I had, I've definitely got at least half a ball. These are 50 gram balls, I think, at least half a ball. And I've got a whole ball of the white. So let's see what it was called. Oh, it's just called Peruvian. So Phil Kalana Peruvian, 100% Peruvian Highland wool. And this white is the natural white colour. Annoyingly, I had to buy these both from two different yarn stores because I couldn't find one that had the black and the natural white in stock. But it's, um, yeah, quite affordable yarn. I'm definitely going to do something with the leftovers there. But overall, really happy with this. Um, I... I'm pretty sure I did mention this the first time I showed the cushion, but how I got the size right, so I wanted it to be really nice and full, and if you've sewn cushions before, you'll know that you always want your, um, what do you call the, like the cushion pad or the cushion insert to be a little bit bigger than the cushion cover that you've made. So I knew that I wanted it to be a nice snug fit, so I cast on using the needle size and the pattern, I think it was a five, five millimeter and once I'd got started I rather than swatching I just in the hopes that I was gonna get a good fit a good gauge um, I just started and knit a couple of inches but quickly I realized that it was going to be too long so what I did was I measured so I worked out roughly that I wanted it to be a little bit less than 30 I can't remember exactly but I looked at the number of stitches on the needle went down so that I was going to knit a little bit shorter than 30 centimeters and yeah that worked out really well so I worked out how many stitches that was ripped it out started again with that smaller amount of stitches on the needle and that worked for my gauge so that was how I've been able to I think you can kind of see that it looks really nicely stuffed 
you I hate that look if you have like a floppy there's nothing worse than like a floppy cushion where the cushion inside is too small for the actual cover you want it to look nice and plump so that's a tip if you're knitting the cushion um, yeah you want to try and make your uh, inside a little bit bigger than your outside basically so I hope you like that. I actually think this would make a really good gift for Christmas. So I'm thinking about, um, like, I'm going to start being a bit nosy and thinking about what kind of colour schemes my friends and family have got in their homes and if this looks like it might work. You can obviously use loads of different colours. In the pattern, she actually shows you how you can use different colourways and do a different amount of colours for each of them. Um, but I really like the monochrome look of the black and white. I'll show you the end. So... I, in the pattern I think you're supposed to kitchen a stitch but I've just sewn up the end with a piece of yarn um, and I think that looks fine. I don't think anyone's going to be looking too closely and yeah I just didn't really feel like doing the kitchen stitch. So yeah I just went round and just did a very quick sew up of the bottom. But yeah I'll put that to one side and as I say hopefully do some gift knitting. Oh actually this is... Um, yeah, this is perfect because I was going to talk to you about some Christmas things. That is not planned at all. Let me show you what else have I got. Yeah, I think that's okay for the knitting. So I'm going to show you my advent calendars. And I didn't even show these last year. And I hope you don't mind me talking about Christmas in June. Or no, so we're in July now, aren't we? Sorry, but I have to show you the calendars that I've been working on. So this time last year, I was designing an advent calendar. So you could fill this with anything you like. You can have fun thinking about the things you want to put in it. But I've actually designed it so you can fit a 20 gram mini skein inside. So the idea was that I wanted to make something that was reusable every year, but you could buy a calendar, a yarn advent calendar from your favourite dyer and keep it in one of these. So I have designed, there are 12 different motifs which repeat, so it goes to 12 and then to 24. And I have screen printed the material, I have sewn them all. I'm going to stand back so you can see. <laughs> you can see it's very tall. I'm only five foot, so <laughs> I'm quite petite for a woman. Um, but yeah, it's really nice size and as I say I sized it specifically so it would fit that 20 gram mini skein in so that really dictated the scale of the calendar but I think it looks lovely and this one um, comes with the black ink but I'm going to show you it actually comes in grey and red the red was the most popular last year. It's a beautiful, really nice rich Christmassy red but I can't seem to find my sample and I'm trying to think back if maybe I gave it to my sister, <laughs> I'm wondering if I maybe gave the sample to her because I just ran out of time sewing all the calendars. And the fact that I was running out of time and running out of steam sewing these calendars is why I'm showing them to you now because they're in the shop at the moment. I've opened pre-orders, so if anybody who wants a calendar, um, you can go over to the shop and here's the grey version. You can see the grey and the red both have the motifs in gold. So I've just, as an example, I've filled the little pockets with some envelopes. These are just little brown paper bags. I think I bought these off of eBay. I've got a little DPN cosy and a lavender sachet. But um, yeah, I think you can see that it looks beautiful with the gold ink. I love how that turned out. And the, as I say, the red is beautiful as well. Really lovely Christmassy red. But my thinking was that the grey looks very chic and the white actually if you've got a more modern sort of theme I think now there's a lot of Christmas themes where it's got that kind of Scandinavian look with lots of like green and white maybe like a little bit of sparkle and I thought that this would look very chic in that kind of decor and my thinking behind the red would look really nice in a very traditional um, sort of reds, golds, greens, that kind of traditional Christmas holiday theme. So yeah, I really hope you like these. I didn't show them last year on YouTube because as I say, I was really surprised at how popular they were and I just didn't have the capacity to do any more after I'd sent it out to my newsletter list and people on Instagram, I think, knew that the calendars were coming and were on the email list. So as soon as I put them up, they sold out and that's quite Quite unusual for me to have something 
that goes that quickly because I was prepared to make quite a lot of these so yeah this year to make things a little bit easier on myself so I'm not sewing the calendars day and night to try and get these finished so that everybody had them on December 1st I was very worried about them not getting to people for December 1st because obviously sort of from October, November time, international shipping, it always slows down because there's just so much mail in the system. So I was very paranoid about that. Lots of my customers are in America and I wanted everyone to have them in time, um, which I think, I hope everybody did. I didn't have any complaints about shipping and I had some lovely feedback on the calendars. It was really nice hearing from people who were going to do the same as me they were going to use it every year and they were sort of lots of people bought two which I thought was so sweet I hadn't anticipated that so lots of people had bought one for themselves one for a partner and they were talking about being excited about filling them I was filling one for my nephew so I had great fun me and my mum went to a toy store and got lots of little bits so I can't think how old he's only two now so he was yeah sort of like 18 months maybe close to two actually he's born in February so nearly two so we got all sorts of lovely little things like I can remember one of the things we got was like a set of finger puppets and we put split those up so that each day there was different ones in there I gave him one of the little mice so I made one of these as a tree ornament I'll put a link to this because I made this uh, I think her name's Anne Wood the designer this is a free pattern and I made these, put a string through and put his initial on so he could hang it on the tree. And I made a little pair of mittens that I was able to pop in the pocket. So, yeah, really excited to be bringing those back this year. I hope you don't mind me putting them up for sale now because you've probably heard from lots of people that do handmade businesses that it's really hard for filling those orders at the busiest time of the year close to Christmas so I thought it seemed really sensible to make them available now and I was sure that there'd be some very organised people amongst you that um, wouldn't mind shopping for the holidays early and getting your orders in now so if you go over to the listing I'm going to put a link below don't think I mentioned where the show notes are yet. Show notes will be below this video. There'll be a link and there'll be that will take you over to the blog where there'll be a list of everything that I've talked about today. And if you want to visit the shop, it's alexcollinsdesigns.com slash shop. And I'll put the link to that in those show notes as well. And basically you can go over to the shop and um, you'll see the pre-order listing for each of the colours. And right at the top, I'll be putting which batch you're ordering from. So if you check the batch number and it will have a date for estimated shipping because I'm going to stagger it. So, um, yeah, I'm, I will release different batches as they sell out. I will update the date so you'll see when your shipping date is but they'll be shipping out over the summer and yeah you'll have them in time for Christmas so yeah really excited to have those and yeah do check out those show notes if you want you can get the show notes to your email so I send out an email to everybody in the show notes mailing list every time one of these videos goes live I send out an email and I put all the links right there so yeah you know what I'm talking about before you've even watched the video <laughs> so if that's something you're interested in you can sign up for that as well so another thing I was going to chat to you quickly about is um, I found this book at my local library and it's called Modern Quilting by Julius Arthur of House of Quinn and I follow him on Instagram and I thought I would show you, oh, the, this is the project that I wanted to do, then it's actually on the front, I didn't realise that. <laughs> I put a bookmark inside so I could show you. Oh, um, it's called the Broken Ladder Quilt, and it's an improv method of piecing, so doesn't that look gorgeous? I love it in that red. I, um, yeah, it has a sort of guide, but the idea is that you very much um, cut and piece as you go and you get this sort of very irregular shape. And I don't know if it comes across on the podcast, but <laughs> I'm not a very go with the flow, improv piecing type of person. I usually <laughs> like to have more of a plan, but I actually had a little practice and oh, it's in the front of the book. I had a little practice and I did an improv piece. So I did this little small square. This was a piece of fabric that I painted. So I got some fabric paints and I had to play around with different brush sizes, different amounts of ink on the brush, uh, different strokes to see 
how, yeah, sort of the different effects I could get. And then I cut out a little piece of that and did an applique. And yeah, these bits were all just improv and really had a lot of fun. So just on that tiny little small scale, I, well, I have no business starting another quilt because as you might have seen in another episode, I have been making a quilt with some of my own fabrics and that's not finished. So I shouldn't even be looking at this, but it was really exciting to find this book at my library. <laughs> so I pulled out some fabrics that I've got. I do like this sort of mustardy yellow, but I think I'm leaning more towards the orange. I'm not sure if it's because in the book he's used that kind of brick red, but um, I do like this colour. And oh, you can see here where I've got an orange quilt. I like this colour with some of the other home furnishing things that we've got. My sofa, if you can see in the corner, it's like a teal kind of, well, this kind of turquoisey colour, which goes really nicely. So yeah, that's a project that I've got in the works. I think, yeah, it's so nice being able to use the library for that kind of thing. And there's some other really nice projects. So if you, I'm ashamed of that. I don't want to give away all the different projects you can see some of the bits that are available there um what else do I like yeah it's a really nice book so let me find there was one other thing that I was interested in making I love the color palette he uses a lot of the things are naturally dyed as well so it has a really lovely quality to it there's quite a lot of abstract quilts it's typical isn't it as soon as you start flicking through you make the quality right at the back of the book Oh, here it is. So there was another cushion as well that I thought looked really nice. I love that. I thought that was a really lovely piece. So, yeah, that's Modern Quilting, Contemporary Guides Quilting by Hand by Julius Arthur. And, yeah, he does some lovely work on Instagram. So that was something that I wanted to show you. And, yeah, we shall see. It has made me think maybe I should get to work on doing my <laughs> other quilt that I've started. And maybe shouldn't be embarking on a new quilt right away. But I don't know, the improv piecing is quite quick. It's a very different thing because you're not having... I think a lot of my uh, time spent qu on the quilts is really accurately cutting everything. I like all my corners and edges to match up perfectly and yeah I spend a lot of time with my quilting really really making sure that I'm getting the squares or the triangles perfectly to the right size so maybe this will be a bit more free although <laughs> maybe I'll just spend a lot of time second guessing myself and wondering if I'm like making this pieces big enough or small enough I don't know but I think it'd be quite good for me so we'll see you'll have to see in a future episode how I get on with that um but yeah I'll leave a link to that book as well in the show notes I thank you so much for watching I think I mentioned last time that I've been doing some things over page on patreon and I stupidly I don't think I shared the link I mean lots of you did find your way over there because it was on my website and on my Instagram but I don't think I actually put the link in the show notes like I said I was going to so if you heard me talk last time about Patreon come and have a look this time if you didn't find the link it's a really nice little group of people at the moment over there and it's the place that I'm sharing all the creative work and behind the scenes of what I'm doing so as I said this time last year I was working on my advent calendar and right now I'm working on a kitchen garden collection and I'm working on some pieces for the holidays this year so they're getting a little sneak peek of what's going on over there so if it sounds like something you'd be interested in as I say it's very much um, more looking at the creative work that I do and the artistic and design side of things so it is quite different what I'm sharing there to Instagram and YouTube so I think it might be of interest to you but um yeah check that out as well if you've enjoyed the video give it a thumbs up and I'd love it if you subscribed if you're not subscribed already that way you won't miss any future episodes you'll be able to keep up with what I'm doing over here I yeah I'm really happy that you joined me here today I love getting to chat with you and share what I'm making it's yeah it's really nice so thank you for being here if you'd like to let me know what you've been working on and why you've been watching that would be great I love thinking about what you're doing while you're watching and yeah let me know where you are in the world because I know there's people all over the place watching right now so I'd love to get to know you a little bit better thanks again for watching and I'm going to see you in a few weeks time 